Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I'm actually switching up my Dum Dum's Guide to Machining a little bit because I've been doing a bunch of precision grinding for one of our shop made tool projects and I think it might be beneficial for people to understand why I would go to what's called abrasive machining for degrees of precision over a milling machine. Now a milling machine while it's a little bit less intuitive and obvious what you can and can't do on it than a lathe, people look at these and don't really, like, what, is it an upside down bench grinder? What is it? Now, these are both Boyer Schultz 6x12 surface grinders. That one's a couple years older. It doesn't have some of the features this one does. This one does have the optional work light and it does have a rapid traverse arm, which is really nice. Now this is basically what you go to when a thousandth of an inch is not enough. Uh, it, the hand wheels, the down feed wheels on this are graduated in one half thousandths of an inch. So when you're really on your game with these, you can get parts squared within a few ten thousandths of an inch. Uh, what I'll do is actually magnet uh, indicator onto the arm here. And as I move up and down, I'll watch the indicator arm instead of the hand wheel. So I can move this repeatedly to within two ten thousandths of an inch. Now, do you need that most of the time? Absolutely not. But there's really two reasons to grind instead of mill. And the two are, one, it's too hard to mill. And the other is you need accuracy that can't realistically be achieved on a milling machine. However, this being said, more modern CNC machines can get parts repeatably to within a half thousandths of an inch and on a really good day within a ten thousandths of an inch. So precision grinding like this is sort of less relevant, I think, than it used to be until we're getting into metrology tools, i.e. precision measurement tools. Now, metrology is just the art and science of precision measurement. That's what its definition is. And when you get into work like this, your ability to measure repeatedly really starts to matter. Uh, when you put parts on a surface plate, there is a technique to it. You have to ring them a little bit because when you start getting into well-ground surfaces, when you move the part around, it actually squeezes some of the air out. Now, it isn't consistent to demonstrate, and that's one of the things is you're ringing it for consistency. If you slide the part onto the surface plate, you get a thinner air cushion. And what's actually pretty wild just moving parts around or the surface gauge around, you can squeeze out almost a thousandths of an inch in some cases, mostly about two to three ten thousandths of an inch. And one of the advantages you see when it comes to extreme precision over a milling machine is on a surface grinder, you grind the chucks. So, excuse me, there's always some error as you slide and as you move this way and you move up and down. Now, when you grind this, you can correct for that. You can actually correct for wear in the machine. Uh, the chucks on these can't be interchanged between the machines because this carriage on this side is more than two or three thousandths of an inch low because this machine wasn't getting oil to the waist. However, that being said, this machine is so good for half thousandths of an inch tolerances. This one just happens to be good for two ten thousandths of an inch tolerances. And I think part of that isn't actually the uh, wear in the ways so much as the spindle bearings are in better shape on this machine. Because uh, assuming an equally well-balanced, well-dressed wheel, I get a slightly better surface finish on this machine. Now, this one here, I've just dedicated to grinding carbide. You know, I have an arbor on it that isn't one of my good quick change ones and I just use it to grind my carbide tools. It has a silicon carbide wheel on it, and it's become kind of my dirty machine. Now I'm just cleaning the mag chucks because frankly it's embarrassing to let them get too filthy. But these machines are really cool, and I've got some fixtures I'm gonna pull, bring the camera in closer, set them on the machine, and show you in a little bit. But I just wanted to introduce you into why you would look at grinding. Now the thing about grinding is you can really tickle parts because as a rule, you're only able to take cuts that are one half, one half the corner radius of your cutter, so how, how sharp it is. But because we're using um, 
basically sub thousandths of an inch tools were able to take sub ten thousandths of an inch cuts in certain cases where I would have to do the math on what Micron 46 grit works out to, but you really can get a fantastic finish on it. A, a ground finish, a well-ground, well-dressed wheel will punch well above its weight in aesthetics. Where a 46 grit on this machine looks like a 220 grit um, off a belt sander, it, or even a 400 grit if you really get into it. Now, I keep this stick lube here because it helps the surface finish and I notice it helps keep the dust down and it does help with wheel wear somewhat but these machines it they're really they are pretty simple you can just think of it as a horizontal milling machine that's just super duper precise where most of the operations you can do in a horizontal mill you can do on this now I'm just going to grab the camera and move you and we'll start popping tools out of the bottom of the cabinet You know, excuse me. I think we're going to make this a one-shot video. I do think it's viable. It is fun to just go out here, record for 20 minutes, and call it a day. Uh, going back to the editing room does take some of the fun out of it. Now, these are just a couple different basic fixtures. This is a Spindexer. So, I mostly use this to grind flats. You can spin the part in here, and you can grind circles. So... I have ground parts in because I don't have a tool post grinder for the lathe yet. So you can put stuff in a collet that sticks out of the end of here and grind parts very precisely. Uh, that is does have an advantage, especially for sliding fits. Now this is also useful. You can modify this to sharpen the flutes on your end mill because this could slide in and out. Uh, there is a lot of different things you can do with really simple tools like this. Now on a lighter duty milling machine, you could actually use this instead of a dividing head for some jobs. Now I just happen to have a dividing head, so I use a dividing head. Oh. You know, the other downside is you leak oil everywhere inside the cabinet, so they're always a mess. Now this is just an end mill sharpening fixture. Uh, it's got, you see how it leans this way? So you grind the rake into your flutes, and then you can grind in your clearance. Really simple tool, pretty easy to use. It's got a little bit of a learning curve, but it works. And, you know, I've resharpened my mills and really doubled the life on a lot of them. So absolutely fantastic, worth the 50 or 60 bucks. And we've got interchangeable arbors and wheels on this guy. So that's just a wheel puller. And as I separate these slowly and gently because surface grinding wheels are depressingly expensive. You know, this wheel here, I don't really use it that much. If I've got to get into a corner, so I've got a square corner like this, and I really need to work that, this 80 grit wheel is nice because it doesn't wear as fast as my general purpose wheel. Now also this, this cup wheel fits in here like this. So I can grind on this edge and I can grind on the face of it, which is really awesome. So I can square vertical surfaces quite quickly. Uh, now, do I use it that often? No, not really. I, I'd say probably 90% of my grinding work is just with this general purpose wheel. You can actually see how I've dressed it. So we only cut down here. So I can do light face grinding work. You know, you can only take off a very, very, very small amount per pass, but you can do it. I wouldn't recommend that if you're not comfortable with the grinding wheel and you don't really understand what you can and can't do. You don't really know what to listen for because these wheels will explode and they will ruin your day. Uh, good quality wheels don't blow up like the cheap ones. But as you can see in here, I've got quite a few wheels. Now this is, I don't know what this grid is, it's a really open, I think, 36 grit wheel. This ruby wheel is very good for hardened steel, and this is just a Norton general purpose. It chips really easily. I'm not pleased with these Norton wheels. I've actually started using, I think they're CGW Camel out of Israel. 
and I switched over to them and I've been much happier with their product than Norton, unfortunately. You know, the older Norton wheels are still excellent, but they're not what they used to be. Now also, I'm just gonna grab a couple more arbors out of here. I have some rather neat, these are really specialized for tool and cutting grinding, but these arbors will also go on the machine here. So you can see how I can kind of reach back into confined spaces. Unfortunately, some of these are missing parts, but here, this is really nice for grinding in confined spaces. These also could go on a tool post grinder, Necessari not necessarily a surface grinder. And you can see here, this is what one of the non quick change arbors look like. These are pretty hard to pop on and off. The, the quick change ones have threads in here, so you can thread this puller in. I probably could pop this on the lathe and just single point some threads in there, but they're really, really hard. Uh, remarkably hard, in fact. So it's not practical to single point thread cut on these. But this is kind of just a rough overview of what the machine is. I'll probably splice in some footage of uh, actual grinding on it, but I mean, I show so much footage. You can see my uh, not quite one, two, three blocks video. I give an explanation of grinding for squareness on there. I don't really touch on grinding for parallelism because that's not what we're doing. Uh, it's inferred that if you have good squareness, you also have good parallelism. Uh, parallelism is just how parallel two surfaces are to each other, how close to the same plane they're in. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I do recording it. And it, it's really been awesome, the support I've been getting and the, the channel growth I've been getting. Now, unfortunately, most of you guys don't watch to the end of the videos. But you know what? It's for those of you that are, thank you very much. And I really appreciate it.